Hello and welcome to this episode of the Guys with Glasses podcast. I am Ben Dito John and I have with me No Name Josh. Hey Josh, how you doing buddy? Uh, good man. Just got done moving all of uh, Cassie's stuff in so pretty soon we'll have another computer set up and hopefully she'll start doing uh, some reviews for books and such. Awesome, we're looking forward to that and you guys are going to be kind of land partying it up, right? Yeah, she her desk will be like essentially back to back with mine, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. I remember when um I lived with a few of my friends and uh we had four PCs all set up in the same room and we would play Dota like all the time. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, that's also Addicting. the plan. We're probably going to be playing some Civ and maybe some other games like War Z or something. Nice. I think War Z got renamed, I heard. Did it? Yeah. Oh. Well, I have no idea. I yeah. haven't played it in a really long time, so I guess we'll figure yeah, that out. Yeah, I think it was like close to the new movie coming out, you know, World War Z and everything. Oh, oh, I see. Well, uh, they might have bought the rights and like told them to change it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we have some interesting topics to discuss today. Last of Us. Oh, of course. Amazing game. Um, I beat it, and you recently got it. We want to talk about that. Uh, we also want to talk about um, Oculus Rift. Uh, you, you know, this is... This amazing new piece of cool VR technology. Uh, we want to talk about that and um, a new game that you introduced me to called Routine. And that's a PC indie game that's going to be using that. So, um, And then if time allows, we might talk about uh, the new Xbox One policies and uh, the new Deadpool game. So kind of getting started on Last of Us. Um, I know. I'm worried you know, that you're going to spoil something for me. And uh... I, I, promise I, won't, I promise I won't spoil anything. I will just say that if you have not played this game, this is worth buying a PlayStation 3 for. It is a masterpiece, and I and I don't think I've ever referred to a game as that, minus like Shadow of the Colossus, like my favorite game of all time. Last of Us is just superb. Just the, the storytelling and the gameplay and the voice acting and the graphics, it's just all like AAA. Amazing. So, and what do you think of it so far, Josh? Okay, so... It is amazing. It's beautiful. The gameplay is fun. Um, I did not. What do you think? What do you think of the f- first ten minutes of playing it? As- oh my god! Okay, that sucked me into the game. And I will tell you this: this is kind of what <laughs> sucked for me. I was super excited at that part. I was like, "Oh my god, this is gonna be fucking amazing!" Right? I was super excited about it. And then I got into the next part, and I was okay with that. But then, um. It gets into, like, this pitch-dark situation for, like, an hour and a half, it felt like. I don't don't like that situation because it's one of those things that I hate. I understand they want to make it complicated and that you have to kind of wait and figure out where everybody moves. But it drives me nuts when it takes forever to figure out where everybody shambles off to so that you can kind of pick and maneuver your way around. I died a lot. Like are, I died a lot. Are you? Di- uh, what what difficulty are you playing on? I'm playing on normal, which makes me feel like an asshole because, you know, normally I don't yeah have because a I played on it. normal and I didn't I don't I didn't feel like I died that much. Well, normal amount. I I don't like the stupid clickers because if you, they get anywhere near you, you're fucked because they just go into like mad yeah, swinging arms so... and you just die. And I'm like, God damn it, I hate it. So clickers are clickers are interesting. Basically, there's. There's different types of enemies. There's there's humans, and then there's also uh, two different types. No, there's kind like of, there's three. More, but, but three different types of zombies. But yeah, some run after you, and then some they they do not run after you unless you make a noise, and then they'll chase after you. And it, those guys, when they chase after you, um, and they hear you, then it's basically an instant death. Well, unless you can shoot guys. them. But if you yeah. only have a melee weapon or or something like that. Then you are totally hosed. I will say this though: my favorite thing in the game is the Maltoffs. They kill everybody. Oh, those everybody. are amazing! Dude, I I'm like f first aid kits. I am going to strictly build Maltoffs to just throw at every clicker I yeah, see. Yeah, you know, all of them run to that clicker, and they all catch. You know, on that's fire. another. I think that was another interesting aspect of the game is that you have to do. Uh, crafting nowhere near the scope of like Minecraft. I mean, just basic some basic crafting. You find items, and there's like six or eight different types of items, and uh, you use those to craft different things. And so you have a choice between either crafting a health kit or crafting a Molotov cocktail that that sets things on fire. You know, and it's interesting because it's like, yeah, you can um you can 
grab a bottle and you can throw it to kind of make the clickers go over to it and then you can set them on fire, you know, after they, they get distracted. And yeah, those are awesome. That's my, you know, that's my favorite thing. I, I just, either that or if I'm worried that somebody's going to come around like my flank, I'll leave one of those little nail bombs on the ground. So are you are you sneaking around when you get around the clickers? Because you can't actually, even when you're sneaking, like you can't go full speed. You actually have to go like no, I know. half speed or less. Typically it's the stupid runner one that I'll accidentally, I'll oh, be yeah, sneaking the... up behind and at the last second that fucker turns around. And then, you know, those guys everybody's are after you. And it's the worst when a clicker comes up when you're in the middle of like pulling one of those runners off of you and then he just runs up and kills you. And yeah, it sucks. I got really irritated at one part. My teammate goes sprinting out across like right in front of a bunch of zombies for no good reason. And all of a sudden, all of them get set off. It was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually read a comic about that recently of like, yeah, the AI kind of like doesn't pay attention to their sound so much yeah you know um you know you know one thing i the, the storyline aspect that i thought was really interesting is that the crazy events happen at the beginning it's kind of the the first stages of the outbreak and then the game is actually like 20 years later yeah yeah and i think that's just i think that's fascinating um you know i'm a huge fan of the post-apocalyptic genre i love uh walking dead and stuff but all of those kind of take place like right after, soon after, you know, and this game, it's like, man, shit's already hit the fan and it still sucks, you know, 20 years later. And it's kind of like, you know, yeah, that, that human survival aspect. What I think um, is cool about it is uh, like the narrative. It reminds me of like how, uh, how people adapt to things uh, fairly quickly. Yes. I thought that was yeah. I totally cool. agree. Yeah, that the human aspect is a strong theme, you know, in the game. It's not, it's not like you know, uh, other post-apocalyptic games. It's all just kind of about like, oh, you have to survive and get your bullets and then you know kill stuff. You know, I mean, this game it's very it's very human, you know, and then that's why the storyline is so engrossing. It's really like, in and, and you know, kind of for this type of game, it's like you have these characters that are talking and a lot of voice acting can be kind of cheesy or not come off very well um you know but in this game it's like it's so believable and and just so amazingly well done and 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 some technical aspects i think that are really interesting that i was reading about on the game is that uh it frequently goes to these cutscenes. yeah and the cutscenes actually you know i was reading about how they were done and they're actually high resolution models of the gameplay scenes um, so it's not using up like, you know, the CG pre-rendered stuff. It's actually, um, just high resolution models and their, their lip movement and everything goes super, super good with what they're saying. Um, really, really accurate. And that was actually hand done. I thought it was motion captured. Oh, that is crazy. Done. Yeah. I mean, just the amount of detail that goes into that. And a lot of people thought that the girl that did it, uh, that was doing the voice was Ellen Page. It's actually not Ellen Page. Did you um, did you hear about her not being very happy about that? You know, so I read the Reddit post actually when that was going on. I saw that when I was posted. Um, people basically commented that like, "Hey, have you played Last of Us? Because you look a lot like the character here." You know, and people were like, "What? I thought that you were the character." And she kind of she kind of said that, "Oh, you know, I don't." I, she said, "I don't appreciate that," or "I didn't, I didn't, I don't appreciate being like kind of modeled after and stuff." I think. This game and the character model was being done way in advance of her game that she's making called Two Souls. And um, kind of based on her reaction from what other people were saying, it's kind of like that's kind of her personality. It wasn't like really trying to be like snarky or mean. It was just kind of like, ah, whatever, you know, like it's it wasn't a big deal. But like the gaming press kind of ran with it, you know, and said like, oh, you you hate this really popular game. So well, I didn't think she. I don't know. I, mean, I just thought that uh, you know she was maybe annoyed by it because it's a Sony exclusive and or a PlayStation exclusive, and so is Beyond Two Souls. And two I so think that yeah. she was like, "Well, they could have just asked me, and I probably would have done it." Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm really looking forward to Beyond Two Souls. Um, but the character in Last of Us does look a lot like Ellen's Page. 
Yeah. It does look very similar. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I thought it was kind of interesting. Because <laughs> um, I thought it was at first when I first started playing it. Because Cassie's like, are you sure that's Ellen, or not Ellen Page? I'm like, I swear she wasn't in it. So I had to look it up yeah. on Wikipedia just to see. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's not her, but we'll check. And uh, yeah, that's where I found the Reddit um, post. Yeah, you know, uh, but last, I mean, the, the storyline, like the voice acting is just like, it's so, so good. It is top notch. Um, top notch. I, I love the story. Some of the gameplay aspects annoy me, although um, not like, not, I guess not like annoy me, but sometimes it's like a little bit weird, like when your people run across some, somewhere or they'll run out in front of people who are shooting at you and it's like, come on. Yeah. Yeah, that aspect, yeah, you know, little things like that are definitely there. There was like kind of like some pop-up glitches I had or characters kind of walk through some spaces. Oh, I'm you know, there was a little weird problem, like that. actually. Every once in a while, my character will just start spinning in circles until I hit the select button, and then I resume the game, and then it'll it might work. might be your out. controller. What, did you play, was that all in one game, game, gameplay? Um, it's been your over every might be... gameplay. No matter how charged or uncharged the controller is, I don't know. Maybe it is the controller, but it was. Really oh, weird. I never, I never had that. Not even once. Oh, well, maybe it is my controller. Huh. I'll, I'll try to find my other one and see if it'll work. But uh, you know, yeah, some other car- some some people were kind of complaining about some aspects of the game, like that it's hard to shoot, um, it's hard to aim. You know, I, but in my I didn't opinion, find that the hard. game, I didn't find it hard. It it is it, some aspects like. When, you know, you're trying to shoot, it's like it gets wobbly, and after you shoot, there's a lot of recoil, and it's kind of hard to, to recalibrate. Um, yeah, but that's how you fire think, a real gun. I mean... Yeah, that's what I thought, too, is that, like, it kind of makes the situations more tense, more dramatic, and yeah, it's more realistic. I mean, this isn't a game like Halo, you know, where you're going to go in there, guns a-blazing without any recoil. Like, every <laughs> shot counts, you know? Especially when something's, like, chasing after you and about to bite your face off. It's like, you have to aim that shot, you know? Oh, I know. I just, I am like now a headshot guy. I just yeah, f- straight up focus on hitting that dude in the face instead of like firing off a bunch of shots. But Cassie was watching me, and I did a terror. I was like putting on a uh, a clinic of how not to shoot. I missed this dude like can I give, four times as he's sprinting at me. I'm gonna give you one piece of advice from my game play when I when I finished it. I did not realize until I was about an hour away from beating the game that you could upgrade your character. You didn't know that? And this is so... No! <laughs> and you can, you can upgrade to your character like in the first, you know, ten minutes of game. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, I didn't... Yeah, finding the pills, you know, and you can like make them so they have more accuracy or more life or whatever. And I was like, I did not even know that! I upgraded at the very end! <laughs> I know, I... Now I consider it was a handicap to, to my game. But yeah, I didn't find it until like after I got into the city with Bill, and I was like, "Wait, what's this thing?" And I was like, what "Yeah, the hell? like why didn't it tell me about yeah. this early on in the game?" I, I was so frustrated when they were like, and at the end, I had like all of this, you know, uh, built up or or pent up, uh, uh, you know, pills so I can spend stuff. And I was like, "Oh no, I'm just gonna go on a spending spree, you know, and like get all my <laughs> upgraded health and so I'm like, oh, would have loved this, you know, ten hours of gameplay ago." But yeah, um, no, I, I beat it and I just, I, I loved it. I loved it. Absolutely. Every second of it. So good. One of the most amazing so scenes is the very beginning part. That is like one of the saddest scenes I've ever had. In a, and it's just so visceral when they're like driving through the city at the very beginning. And then when you guys yeah, are, like, so, um, come upon like the, the military guys. So we've, we've, we've both played it. So let's just kind of spoil some things and let's talk about it. You know, it's interesting that, like, I, little little touches of polish, I think, in the game, like, really make it go far. For instance, in the first few seconds, there's, like, this explosion that happens off in the distance. And what's interesting is that, like, you hear dogs start barking. Yeah. You know, off in the distance. And I'm like, that is what would happen, you know? You'd start to hear that. you hear, like, some car alarms going off and stuff. And I just thought, you know, that's a subtle piece where obviously somebody thought a lot about that and the events that would occur with that you know and that's what's and awesome it's the only part yeah. yeah and then like also um this this actually only happens at the beginning when you see your character in a mirror 
um, like when you first start the game. Oh yeah, when you're, you're looking at yourself girl. in a mirror. Yeah, when you're a little girl, yeah. and 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 later in the, later in the game, um, you you actually don't uh, see yourself in mirrors. But what's interesting about that is, from what I've read about gameplay development, it's really, really, really hard to make yourself appear in mirrors. Basically, they have to design like two cameras into the game, oh. and it, it's basically like kind of like doubles the amount of like processing power sometimes that's required to do that. Um, so it's actually really difficult, and a lot of games choose not to do that because of the overhead and requirements. But in this game, at least at the beginning, they decided that was a critical part. You know, they wanted that to appear realistic in that part and, and you know, kind of see yourself as like a little girl, you know, and playing that. The whole time and, I was just so nervous. Yeah. I'm like, this girl's going to die. This girl's going to die. Oh, my God. I'm going to, you know, I'm like trying to be. I love how me in a game, I'm like thinking, maybe if I do it just right, <laughs> she'll survive. You know, like I'll survive this it's, situation. Yeah. And you know for sure kind of, that that's not what's going to happen. It's kind of that Final Fantasy VII, like, you know Ares is going to die, but, like, you try to do all the cheats in the book to try to save her. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to tell you how many hours I spent trying to not make her die. Well. Oh, my God. It's like uh, <laughs> it's like uh, in Walking Dead. Nick went back through and played a million times just trying to get uh, Carly not to die. Yeah. So. I don't yeah, know. It's, but it has to happen. It's like it's like it's destiny, you know. Exactly. Um, yeah, you know, and that's that's really interesting. Yeah, when that like first scene is opening up and like you're in the car and you can actually look around. Like I mean, you can turn around, and you can see events happening. You look forward and you see stuff happening. And it's like this is crazy. And the and the yeah. graphics were just amazing. Like the the water, the rain on uh, on the, yeah. the faces of everybody looks just amazing. Yeah, Cassie was it just is... amazed by the water in that game. She's like, oh my god, I really like how they did the water in that. And I'm like, well, when you walk out, look at his bags and his clothes. They're all wet and they'll slowly dry as you walk around. She's like, that is so awesome. Yeah, you know, it's just little things that I think are subtle like that. It's like this game is trying to just meet or exceed like all these gameplay expectations, you know, like... They didn't have to do that, you know, your 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 clothes getting wet, you know, but they've done that in Uncharted. They yeah. you know, and some of the AAA games kinda of did like like Tomb Raider recently did it. And it's like, you know what, that's the bar. Like to be a triple A game you have to have that level of realism, you know, you have to have awesome looking effects. It doesn't really mean much, you know, the fact that like that rain looks amazing, but it immerses you more in it, you know, and it just makes it that much better. It's just kinda of like those so much work went into the details of the game. I think that really make it special. What I really think, uh, what I really actually uh, applaud with, um, with Naughty Dog, especially in like this game and Uncharted Three, is they know where the uncanny valley starts, and they push it all the way to that line, so it doesn't pull you out of the game with being too yeah. realistic. But it's so realistic that your mind accepts it. You know what I mean? I I don't. I don't know exactly yeah, how to you say know. it, but I, I feel like that's that's where they push it to. It's just before you go into the rift or the uh, the uh, valley. Yeah, you know, like the characters. I mean, they have scars. They don't look perfect, you know. And what's also interesting is that like their clothes change. Yeah, yeah. Um, throughout the game, and you, it's just like yeah, it's that that kind of just makes it a little bit more realistic. I mean, when characters, you know, like. When you're carrying a weapon, you know, you see it on your shoulder or, you know, your other character is like carrying something on their back. You know, when you when you pick up a ladder, it's like you move the ladder realistically. And it, yeah, it just kind of immerses you more in that realism. What I really liked is when you're picking up the boards from down below, how he like throws it up and catches it. I was like, oh, that's such a realistic motion. I, did they do motion capture at all in the game, or was it strictly all by hand? They did a lot of motion capture. Okay, that's for, what I So thought. for all of, like, those, um, uh, like, for any of the movement of the characters, those were all, I think, motion capture, but I think, like, the facial lips moving and stuff, that was hand animated. That's cool. So, like, scenes like, scenes like those little, you know, clip movies that last, uh, last a minute or two in parts, like, those were mo motion capped. Yeah. Oh man! And, I mean, I I love it. I'm so glad they did it. I mean, it's just looks awesome. Yeah, one of the coolest scenes is the scene where you finally get the truck started when you leave Bill. Oh, when you're trying to start the truck? No, well that scene sucked. I hated that. And there were so many freaking. That was zombies. difficult. I, I died a few times on that. I went through so much shotgun ammo. Yeah, and you don't get a lot of ammo in the game. I mean, you kind of like sometimes it freaking sucks. You oh, don't I know. Get a lot. 
I I went through a part um right before like that bloater thing that you have to deal with. And uh, oh my god, I had the bloater no so ammo. hard. So in I'm the like gym? Throwing, in the gym? Yeah, I'm like throwing bottles to the other side of the room to try to get the clickers away in the previous little area. I'm like throwing the bottles one way and like running for the doors. I mean, I was just like that was I am so that was angry. one of the hardest parts of the game. I thought like I was so I had a tiny sliver of life left when I beat that. And I was like, God, that bloater is so hard. I'm kind of glad that room was kind of it was well lit though. Because, oh yeah. Like, sometimes in those dark areas, it's so scary. I mean, like I I I nervously got tense. In fact, um, I don't like scary games. I and, oh, there you go. and I don't play that. Yeah, but this one I was like. I, I I continued playing it because I love the storyline and I thought it was interesting. Um, but there were some parts that were like really, really, really freaking scary. And I got so nervous. I had to like stop playing it. You know? I was like getting <laughs> tense and screaming like a little girl. You know, my wife was laughing at me. So. Yeah, except for she wouldn't play it either because it's too scary. Oh, yeah. She actually, she was watching a lot of it and she had her eyes covered for a good portion of it. She, she, she It was interesting because... Um, you know, Maggie watches me play, uh, Maggie's my wife, but she watches me play some of these uh, uh, games, and um, she was actually, like, engrossed for a lot of the game, like, like she wanted me to play it with her in the room, you know, so that she could follow along with the storyline. Um, yeah, Dylan was so like was, that with for her, was, like, watching too. a movie. He was yeah. like, hey, man, you because he was just, you know, roommating with me while he was going to school, and... Uh, you know, he'd be like, don't play that game without me because you, <laughs> I want to know what happens. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He'd just sit there after dive school and just like lounge on the couch while I was playing. You know, it's was, it was pretty funny. He's so, like, it's a movie. Um, when you're playing Last of Us, did you, are you kind of exploring? Do you walk around a little bit? To... So, yes, I am. And no, I'm not at the same time. When it's dark, I'm like, F every other room in the world. Oh, yeah. I, I don't yeah, want me too. Anywhere near it. Because typically the rooms that have, like, the really good stuff in it, you have to sacrifice something. Like... The shivs? Yeah. Like, well, not only Always that, worth like, it. But when you go in there, like, typically there will be, like, a clicker or something you have to take care of beforehand. And it's always in the worst yeah. possible position where you can't, like, get to it quietly. And so... Yeah. Like, when it's dark, I don't know... So the super hearing, sometimes it's a little wonky, like... It doesn't exactly show everybody, so some, because they're you know if it's too far out of the distance or whatever, so you're like creeping yeah. along behind somebody and you got your flashlight off, obviously, because otherwise the runners will see you, and yeah. all of a sudden some random dude will stumble upon you and you didn't even realize it because you know you thought you were clear on this one side. That's just it. it, it the dark scares the crap out of me, so I just figure out where I need to go and just go there. I don't I don't F around with anything else. Yeah, yeah. When it's dark, <laughs> I'm just like, screw this. But you know what's nice is that the game also, it, it lets you know when you're done with the room and that there's no more monsters, so you can't explore. Um, the music changes, the, uh, or the, or the character will say something, you know, like, oh, hey, that. Well, I that, figured out what he does. That or whatever. He kills them super fast. He actually kills whatever monster... Or uh, instead of, like, if you're in a fist fight with a runner, at the end, you know, normally you'll just, like, punch him out or kick him onto the ground or whatever. But yeah. if, if there's no more monsters in the room, he'll, like, sling them over his shoulder and then, like, stomp their face off, you know? And that's... What? I didn't know that. If they're the last monster? Yeah, if they're the last them? monster, that's what he does. Well, at least so far, I didn't that know I've that. noticed. Ah, Because cool. typically he won't do that, you know? He'll just knock them out and put them on the ground or, or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if they kill him or not, or knock him out when he beats him up. The gnarly parts are with people. Oh, you'll though. kill him. Oh, it's so disturbing when you're dealing with the people when you kill them. Yeah, there's some rowdy death scenes I, in the game. Well, and they and they like tell you, you know, they like, they beg you not to do whatever, or they'll like, oh, it just makes me feel bad for like you know killing some of these people. Like there's this one part where uh, Ellie gets attacked. And you, like, grab the guy by the back of his fucking head, and you just ram him, like, face first into, like, this metal counter thing, and it's just oh, so yeah. gross. I'm like, oh my god, that is so rowdy right there. 
so not real. Yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's it's kind of like this survival aspect. It's like these people have kind of, you know, you kind of lost your humanity almost. It's just like this is what you have to do to survive, and it's like no remorse. Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> like this 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 death. It's like kill or be killed kind of thing. I mean, so do you do you like uh, is is it more difficult killing the zombies or the humans? Uh, you do you mean like but... difficult in the way that I feel bad, or difficult in the way that, uh, you know, like actual like is it harder to kill one or the other? Well, like both. Let's say both. Okay, I d- it's harder to like kill the humans because I feel bad about it most of the time. Yeah. Or, or at least I feel like, oh man, this kind of sucks because now he's begging me to not kill him, even though he was just shooting at me or hitting me with a pipe or something, but. Uh, when did your characters beg? When uh, under what conditions? Uh, I I don't know. I I knock this guy onto the ground with like a pipe. I, I don't know if it's like set piece moments where they do that, but like, it was one of the wow. first people you encounter when you crash the truck, and you like grab him and you're like, he's trying to kill you with that piece of glass, and then you kind of reverse it oh, on him yeah. and he's like, no 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 please, and then you just like <laughs> cut his oh, throat yeah. with it. And uh, there was another guy that did it, too, when I punched... Oh, I knocked him down onto the ground, and I was about to hit him in the face with the pipe, and he's like, please don't, and I hit him in the face. And, I mean, I I feel bad, but at the same time, I'm like, this mother effer was just attacking me, so you <laughs> just don't feel bad. Don't feel bad about it. But the aliens, yeah. I think... Or the... Not the aliens. The zombies are much more of a pain in the ass to kill. They They mob you. It's really annoying. I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's pretty messed up, too, is that, like, with the runners and stuff, like, sometimes you hear them crying. Yeah, you know? I know. They're all, they like... They sound kind of human. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of reminded me a little bit of, like, the the first Bioshock game, where, like, you kind of see that human aspect, like, these people don't really know that they've been... Turned. Contaminated? Yeah. Contaminated, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's another thing no, that I thought, I thought was, was really cool, was the spores. Like uh, I was going to mention that, yeah, the spores are a really interesting concept. I, I thought that was really cool, and it's really creepy when the spores are around. Yeah, like you put on the mask, yeah. and just kind of automatically, and basically, like, people can't breathe in spores, otherwise they'll be infected. Um, yeah, so, that, so sometimes, like, you see, like, these spores, like, these funguses kind of growing on the walls, and... You know, it's like it's really hazy it's like, in the room. It's really hard to see. Yeah, like... Like, they have, like, it's interesting because, like, in this world, like, they know that that affects people and the zombies affect people, but it's, like, it's just kind of some growth, you know, and they just don't have a, they don't have a solution for it unless you're in one of the quarantine zones. Yeah. So, it's kind of like, there's, there's plot to it. It's not just, like, this is just a, an outbreak, you know, it's, it's, there's some background. And what's interesting is that you have the option um to kind of go exploring and you find different pieces of paper journal entries or sometimes recordings of people and um usually in these games uh like i I don't read them i don't really care for them um i did like in the first bioshock i didn't in the new bioshock infinite but like in this game like i actually read everything and i was looking out for them um and it's actually really well written like it kind of gives you some history into some people and then, uh, like, sometimes the lead characters will talk based on, you know, what they read about. Um, <laughs> Bill's friend? Yeah. I yeah, you, and there's, Bill. like... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that was interesting. It's like, yeah, you just kind of make assumptions, but then you find out, like, different things about different characters. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's, like... There's also, like, some messed up parts. I mean, like, you read... You, you go through and you go exploring and, like, you find out just kind of about these humans trying to survive, you know, in this world. Um, there's a really, bunch of really, sad really notes like you know yeah, they're coming and they're quarantining us right now I hope you find me and it's like you know the last message <laughs> yeah and you're like either those people yeah. got killed by the military or the guy who was supposed to come back to the house is, is now dead you know yeah but uh yeah yeah game is awesome I, I so far I really like it and I plan on finishing it this week or uh at least by Sunday, anyway. I want to hear your thoughts next week. Already I know this is a buy game, though. If anybody is, like, on the fence... Like, Andrew's on the fence, uh, one of our friends. 
And I'm like, dude, buy yeah. that thing. And I saw you post it on there, so I was like, I don't really need to back it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is one of those games that is worth buying a system for. No doubt about it that if you own a PlayStation, buy this game. Um, in my opinion, this game, if you don't already have a PlayStation, this is the one that makes you get that system. On top of a lot of other great exclusives. But um, yeah, yeah, just Uncharted just in awesome. general. And, uh, and this game. And Beyond Two Souls, I think that's, I mean, definitely a buy for a PS3. All those games you know, have wh- made me want that ga- uh, that console. You know, I'm wondering about Naughty Dog. I mean, like, they have just represented themselves as now just being this amazing, I mean, they've always been a world-class studio, you know, but, like, this game, I think, is just leaps and bounds above other games in its in its class. And, you know, they made a Crash Bandicoot fantastic game when that came out and stuff you know great one they did jack and dexter another great one and now they've done um you know uncharted uncharted is a is a fantastic series you know and a great also system seller and stuff and and got kind of better with every one of them and then now they started a whole new ip being last of us and i wonder you know are they going to make a couple of sequels like they've done in the past with that or are they going to uh you know go with a whole new ip i mean their next game will obviously be on PlayStation 4, and it's just like, oh my god, if this was on PlayStation 3, I mean, oh. the graphics were just so good. Just just imagine what they can do on the next one. Can you imagine? It's going to be crazy. They can do a million particles on the screen in the next generation, man. Up from like yeah, 100,000 you know, or something like that. It is going to be amazing. I mean, kind of the power of, of games, I thought it was interesting, is Last of Us made more money in its opening week than the new Superman movie. <laughs> well i mean which is crazy i mean it's a 60 dollar game you know versus you know a 10 or 20 dollar movie ticket sure but you know it's also interesting that like we saw superman ads all over the place and we saw a handful you know last of us ads and you know last of us is just selling like crazy being sold out you know everywhere it's just awesome oh man hey i, I you know what this is what's crazy they only had one last of us copy when I went there, I went to Fred Meyer, and they had one of the survival editions. I got the survival edition. What are you getting the survival edition? I just you got the regular one. You get an awesome, awesome art book. It covers like oh. everything. Next time I'm out there, uh, I'll have to bring it to you because it is cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, and then it gives you, you know a metal covered case and uh, the music to the thing uh, to the. That's the cool. Game. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I um, it was only like I bought ten dollars uh, more. So I bought the game on the first day of release at the local grocery store because I knew like this is gonna be because I didn't pre-order and I was like, <laughs> oh, plenty of copies there that day. But now I, you got it. I think a few days later, and I was like, oh, you know, last copy. Yeah, so, yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah. Anyway, you want to talk about Oculus Rift because that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We talked about Last of Us more than I was expecting, but I do want to talk about Oculus Rift. Um. I want one. They look <laughs> awesome. Yeah. How do you get one? Just as a question. Uh, so if you did the Kickstarter, and I don't know if you can go to the website and go buy one, but you could pay $300 and you could get one. And if you did it on the Kickstarter, you're basically getting a development kit. So um, not final hardware, not final uh, industrial design. Um you're not going to have that full polished product, but you can start using it to make games or make applications and stuff with it. And um, the final retail product is going to come out sometime later. Some things have already changed, um, actually. I think they've already uh, made it better for people with glasses in their retail one. Um, I think they have a, a bigger screen or a higher resolution screen yep, or something. they're coming out with a, in the, a higher resolution screen. I just actually read Yeah, that. higher resolution yeah, in the actual release. Um, yeah, so they're already making quite a bit of improvements. Um, it is pricey. Uh, the dev kits right now cost 300 bucks. Well, they that's haven't not announced that pricey, how much though. They... I mean... Well, you know, it, it it's interesting because for that technology, other companies or other you know universities have kind of done this like virtual reality technology, and they are, with, they are in the thousands of dollars. Yeah. What's crazy is that, I mean, they brought it down to be like 300. Definitely in the realm of... Of a lot of people can get it. I it's still going to be it's still an expensive accessory. I don't see it necessarily like being sold easily in WalMarts and stuff. Um, but I I could easily see this being sold online, selling like hotcakes, maybe 
game stops kind of thing um, when that comes out. And, but they haven't announced how much the retail version will cost, so maybe it'll be even less. Um, but, you know, when you when you when a game console costs that much, or, you know, this is an accessory to a game console or to your gaming PC. Um, well, the one cool thing about it is, is they're going to try to keep it as close to $300 as they possibly can, or lower. Yeah. He said, uh, oh man, I can't remember the guy's name, the dude who came up with it, but uh, he said uh, that they want to keep it at 300 or less, and they said it's going to be a lot easier now that they uh, raised $16 million. And I think the biggest fact of this, actually, because it seems like anything that has porn backing always wins. VHS one. Yeah. Blu-ray one. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know DVD one. D- yeah, exactly. So it's like, <laughs> I mean, porn picks what wins essentially because people. I don't know why, but people are, you know, into that kind of stuff. Uh, it's weird to me, but it seems to it <laughs> seems to just win. It make any company that has any, uh, you know, competition win. So that's weird. But yeah, I mean, it's it's just it's like. It's really amazing technology in like this three hundred dollar device, you know. Mm-hmm. And I mean, these these people are they're, it's kind of this disruptive technology. I mean, they're they're going out there, and it seems like everybody who's tried it loves it. And I and I haven't had the opportunity to try one yet, but um, you know, there's people already starting to make games for it. You know, as you said, you know, there's other companies, a whole other industries now that are making stuff for this, you know, virtual reality headset. Yeah, and well, the uh... Carmack got behind it, you know, the dude who does Doom and all that stuff. He got yeah. really behind it. Gabe Newell got behind it. So Half-Life 2 and all of its, you know, uh, subsequent stuff is all going to be uh, compatible with Rift. Doom 4 and Doom 3 BFG are both uh, compatible with Rift. Um, and there's a new game that I'm really excited for called Routine that is also uh, compatible with Rift. Yeah, you know, I, I think a perfect genre and like what Routine is, is like that survival horror. I mean, you just feel so much more immersed, you know, when yeah. you're in this scary VR environment. It sounds <laughs> frightening as hell, I mean. Um, you know, I wonder, the, the, the game is really, you know, it's really suited for like first person games, you know, because then you're moving your head, you're moving your character. Mm-hmm. I don't know how it would work with you know, third person games, or maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I think it would work just as well as a normal TV screen, except for you wouldn't have everything else blocking you or, you know, like catching your attention. What, what scares yeah. me about this is I'm going to be completely oblivious to what's going on in the room. And I have this feeling that, you know, somebody's going to, like, you know, scare the crap out of me. While I'm sitting there, you know, you're like completely out of the loop on what's going. Like you just have to trust Cassie or lock your door, you know, when you play. Exactly. It. Like, I mean, I if you're wearing noise canceling headphones and then this VR thing, it's like sensory deprivator three thousand, you know. Yeah, you know, on the topic of VR, I mean, it's actually pretty crazy. I mean, there's a lot of new things coming out. Now, I think Oculus Rift has the biggest chance of being successful and and becoming a mainstream product, but there's a few others that are up and coming. I mean, they've had these things kind of off and on, but they have like these, these uh, basically like vests that you wear that kind of they they pulse or they have motors in them so that you feel like you got hit, you know, in the shoulder. Yeah. Um, and then they have uh uh these, like, oh God, they're like motion. You know, you kind of have like this connect, you know, kind of thing where like you know you're kind of feeling the air. But then also I saw something on Kickstarter just today, and they have this big. It's almost like a like a mat, although it's kind of angled upwards, and you can walk on it, and you have to wear special shoes, and so it's kind of silly. Um, but it, and it's this huge map, but basically you walk, and your character walks in the game. Um, you know, so I mean, you can buy all these things, and it's like, I mean, you're basically having like a professional, amazing VR setup, you know, for like a thousand bucks. When in the past, this was the realm of like you know universities and yeah, hundreds you know, of thousands of dollars and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and you can have this in your house now, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's an exciting time to be a gamer. I, I really, really, really am crossing my fingers. I hope Oculus Rift gets support on consoles. Um, you know, I know not every game might necessarily support it, but I just hope that, you know, maybe you could easily plug it into the USB port on your Xbox One or PlayStation 4 
and it recognizes it and it boots it up and then you can use that. I think that would be I really think that's amazing. going to happen because I, I, I think it's getting more and more support and it's being picked up by bigger and bigger studios as it goes. So Yeah, that's true. Um yeah, I mean right now it's only on PC. I, I don't have a good gaming PC, so unfortunately like that's why I haven't picked up one yet. I would love to play around with it. But if it gets console support, I mean I am all for it and um yeah, I hope it does. I mean, it seems like it's a really fantastic product. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm excited. Uh, but anyway, I kind of wanted to talk about Routine a little bit because I think it looks amazing. And it kind of brings me back to my childhood of games, for some reason, being survival horror in the 90s, and they didn't give you a real weapon. I mean, mostly it was running and Oh, hiding. yeah, that was frightening as hell. <laughs> yeah, so in the game, uh, you showed me a trailer, and, like, you have a little uh, infrared night vision, tiny little screen on your, your weapon, so to speak, and that's, like, what you're seeing, you know, a monster or something chasing you with. And that sounds so frightening. Oh, my God. I I know. I When I saw it, I was like, at first I was like, oh, man, this game's beautiful. Like, look at all this, like, the amazing graphics and all this stuff. And I was like, there's yeah. no way this is not coming from a AAA studio, you know? But it is. I mean, it's it's it it's coming from like an indie studio essentially, and it looks beautiful. And yeah, it almost looks like a sci-fi um, updated graphics amnesia. Yeah, yeah. It, it to me, that's exactly how it feels. Actually, um, with the no weapon thing and running from monsters all the time and hiding and stuff. Yeah, it looks you know, really I, creepy. Though. I got amnesia and I played it for like <laughs> five minutes, and I was like, "Fuck this game." <laughs> Fuck this game so hard. I do not want to play this. Yeah, you convinced me to buy it, and it is pretty fucking creepy. If you like scary games, I mean, that's one of the pinnacles of of the genre. Yeah, um. <laughs> it it was pretty creepy. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, but that is scary. I'm excited, and you you brought up the whole descent thing or uh, amnesia, and that's what it reminded me of when I saw it. I was like, oh my god, this is like, you know, amnesia on the moon. Is what it is. It's creepy as hell. Yeah, it looks like a sci-fi one, you know, but it's brought in for Oculus Rift support, and the graphics look uh, really good. I mean, it's just a couple years old, so yeah, that one it it does look really good. I'm, I'll be eagerly watching this one. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe Last of Us kind of you know got me worked up a little bit to handle <laughs> some of these scary games. I don't know. Well, when I buy yeah. it, I'll let you try it. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah just don't tap me on the shoulder while i'm playing it. yeah with your scary. oculus rift on <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah uh, so. yes so um so next week uh we're gonna try to have on um another guest uh one of our friends um will be on well when we want to discuss uh the new deadpool game um that came out uh i think i'm gonna pick up that one even though it's been getting mixed reviews it looks kind of fun and um yeah, we, we'll talk maybe a little bit about uh, some of this post E three news. Yeah, I was um, some of this uh, Xbox One stuff that's come out. Exactly, I was going to say we should probably talk about like the indie game policy stuff that they're. It's yeah. rumored to come out tomorrow, but um, I guess we'll be talking about it next week. <laughs> yeah, um, that sounds good. All right, man. All right. Well, this is uh, Bandito John and No Name Josh signing off. See you guys later.